Hello to everyone. I am Mariangela Langdon Resentera from Geneva, Switzerland, and I am a graduate from the University of Liverpool's fully online professional doctorate in higher education. The aim of this presentation is to make a case for critical realism as an explanatory framework useful for higher education research. More particularly, I would like to explain how the retroductive reasoning process can be helpful to explore the generative mechanisms for causal explanations of the social world. This presentation draws on a concrete example of critical realist research that explored the underlying mechanisms triggered through doctoral-derived learning and how this could encourage organizational change in some of the participants' higher education institutions and not in others. But before moving to the critical realist research methodology and its explanations, I would like you to experiment the critical realist approach by considering the following situation. So imagine, it is a cold, rainy and windy day of autumn, and from your window you observe leaves falling to the ground. While watching them, you consider what causes actual leaves to fall in a particular direction to the ground. In analyzing this scenario, in your opinion, what causal explanations would you give to describe this situation? Would it be gravity, or the rain, or the wind, or the shape of the leaves, or other considerations? When trying to explain this natural phenomenon, researchers want to use a scientific method based on empirical research, which tries to find general laws and regularities to explain such a phenomenon. The most plausible response to this question would in scientific terms surely be gravity, as this is the general law making things fall to the ground, thereby minimizing theory to the maximum to stick more closely to data observation, generating thereby a flat ontology. However, when considering this question more closely, the answer might be a combination of all these possible explanations, whereby some are observable and can be experienced like the rain or the shape of the leaves, Whereas others, like gravity, are not observable, we can only see its effects of how the leaves fall to the ground. Now, when it comes to explain how social phenomena come to exist, most scholars engage with explanations that are based on such natural scientific observations, which can be empirically proven, thereby omitting plausible explanations that can be uncovered by exploring the different underlying causal mechanisms that can trigger a social phenomenon, and which can in some cases remain untriggered and unobservable, yet their effect have the power to impact on the social world. However, such an approach to research implies a shift from the empirical to the ontological level, because we want to know what makes a phenomenon come to exist in a particular way and under what conditions and circumstances this can occur. This ontological shift in research implies that we engage in reflexivity to understand how things behave in the real world, to conceptualize the social world. So, ontology is about reflexivity, helping the researcher to guide her empirical investigations to explore and understand the assumptions and our presuppositions we have about reality. This in turn implies to use a different theoretical framework than those offered by the positivist or the social constructivist models which is provided by the critical realist perspective. So, for critical realists to acquire knowledge about the world, we cannot rely simply on empirical observations, because objects and events exist independently of our knowledge of them. Indeed, for critical realists, there is no direct connection between experiences, events and mechanisms, because mechanisms might only be experienced indirectly through their effects or not experienced at all. Like in our example of the falling leaves, gravity cannot be observed, yet its effect has a real impact on objects. Meanwhile, it is not always windy nor rainy, and the shapes of the leaves can vary, and trees might have leaves they do not shed. As suggested by Roy Baskar, the founding father of critical realism, it is important to have a stratified ontology rather than law-like explanations and regularities to understand social phenomena. For critical realists, reality is layered and is divided into three different domains, namely the empirical, the actual and the real. The empirical relates to what we can experience and observe directly or indirectly, such as data. 
The actual is where all events and actions happen regardless of our experience or observation of them. The real, meanwhile, relates to the underlying mechanisms with their properties and causal power which, when triggered, generate these events or actions. In using this stratified approach to research, critical realism reaches beyond the empirically relevant to find in deeper strata of reality the underlying mechanisms responsible for social phenomena. In this way, we consider also the conditions and the circumstances under which such mechanisms are triggered and how they can impact or not on the social world for causal explanation. However, mechanism can vary depending on these conditions and circumstances, which implies that knowledge is fallible, because such knowledge is context-bound and when considered in the social world, it is socially constructed and therefore incomplete, as it can be changed any time through research-led understanding. So, by exploring the underlying mechanisms of an object or an event in order to develop a deeper level of explanation and understanding, critical realists search in this way for evidence and truth. This occurs by reaching beyond the descriptive element of specific patterns that can be observed through factual accounts or narratives to find in deeper strata of reality the causal explanations for the phenomenon under study. However, according to Bhaskar, not all accounts are equally valid because they have no rational basis on which to explain one choice over another. Therefore, it is important to break down the social world into its components to understand the composition that makes each object or event what it is and not something else. Indeed, it is the interrelationship of such components that generate the underlying mechanisms that impact on the social world. Archer's morphogenetic framework is relevant in establishing the causal interrelationship between human agency and social structure for the understanding of the social world. For her, structure and agency are separate aspects of social reality with different powers and capacities to elaborate, modify and transform social and institutional practice through social relations. Structure in the morphogenetic model refers to any kind of human construct including human relations and the social roles and positions people have. Meanwhile, agency refers to human actions as individuals or collectivities towards such social and structural arrangements and to have or not the power to act upon pre-established social systems. However, neither critical realism as a philosophy nor Arch's explanatory program explain how to conduct research in the real world. Indeed, there is no distinctive critical realist research method and therefore we need a research method that can fit into the critical realist perspective to conduct scientific research. But how do critical realist researchers move from data to theoretical observations to provide the best possible explanations for a given social phenomenon? Critical realists use abduction and retroduction as logical inference modes to find the best possible explanations for a given phenomenon. The abductive reasoning process relies on extant theory and conceptual frameworks to describe and interpret analytic concepts with the causal components derived from coding of data to find possible causes for emergent mechanisms. It relies mainly on finding something new or unexpected to rework or develop new theory. Meanwhile, the reproductive reasoning process implies to find the causal mechanisms responsible for the occurring of social phenomenon. Reproductive reasoning works backwards to discover the causes, the conditions and the circumstances under which a social phenomenon comes to exist. However, there can be several such mechanisms, each equally plausible, so we need to compare cases to examine how different mechanisms manifest themselves in concrete situations, thereby interpreting their meaning to find the best plausible explanation for the occurrence of a social phenomenon. So, how can one apply these different inference modes in real research and how does it help to find the causal mechanisms responsible for new theory building? In my study, I use grounded theory as a research method and semi-directed interviews of 16 people for data collection. 
Five participants were doctoral students working within different higher education organizations as professionals. The rest of the participants were work colleagues who held either a junior, a peer or a senior position in their company and who had a say in commenting on organizational change. For retroductive argumentation, I built five different cases based on each doctoral student as my unit of analysis to develop an explanation about mechanisms triggered through the interaction between the different agents and their organizational structures. Each interview was encoded by using theoretical sampling to organize and reorganize data into relevant concepts after several analysis cycles by using extant theory to reach a certain level of abstraction. The concepts that were found in my study were consistent with Arch's morphogenetic model, namely human agency, social relations and social structures. By considering the relationship with these three concepts, I could develop plausible explanations about how doctoral learning could impact on organizational change and this by drawing on Archer's reflexivity theory. Archer defines reflexivity as the mental process of normal people engaging in reflexive deliberations about themselves and their immediate social context for its social restructuring. The research found that all the doctoral students shared professional concerns with their work colleagues. In some cases, however, the sharing fostered social relations that supported collective reflexivity and that resulted in organizational change. Agency extends in this way to the group, triggering thereby corporate agency. Corporate agency refers here to people who as a group have the necessary power to bring about change in social structures. Variation in the students' impact on their organizations was further connected to their organizational roles and positions and to the extent to which their agency aligned to the organizational agendas or other external regulatory and normative systems. Strictly limited or no organizational change was however evident, where collective reflexivity was seen to be restricted by existing social structures or when it involved contestation. So, the findings from this particular study show that the mechanisms responsible for organizational change were the triggering of social relations through the sharing of concerns with work colleagues, supporting thereby collective reflexivity. However, such enduring social relations could not always be triggered due to contextual factors, such as roles and positions held by the doctoral students or by their work colleagues. Moreover, mechanisms pertaining to institutional structures, such as organizational agendas and mission statements, or then external normative systems, were countervailing mechanisms that impacted on the student's agency, thereby hindering change to occur in their desired way. So in this study, social relations and collective reflexivity represented the mechanisms under which we can say that organizational change could eventually occur. However, this was only possible if such mechanisms were supported by existing internal social structures, such as organizational agendas, mission statements, or students' roles and positions, or then by external social structures related to normative systems or regulatory bodies, which represent here the transfactual conditions and circumstances under which change could occur. I hope you enjoyed this presentation that you understand more fully now how critical realist theory as a research framework allows us to provide deeper explanations about social phenomena that you would like to research. For more information about this study, please go to the following link and thank you for your attention.